Last fall, the Photos app got a huge and controversial redesign. It was honestly pretty jarring. I remember the first time I opened the app, I said WTF and I hated it for quite a while. And what made matters worse is that the Photos app is one of my most used apps. I use it daily. So it was crucial that I figure out how to work with it. So these are my five tips that have made the biggest difference for me and have basically fixed the Photos app to the point where it's really grown on me and I actually enjoy using it now. And because I'm asked this question all the time, as a bonus tip, I will show you two different ways to hide photos that you've added to an album from your camera roll. So as long as your device is updated with the latest software, you've hopefully at least noticed that the Photos app looks completely different. We used to have like a menu at the bottom, but now it's just this feed with all these different sections. And honestly, this new layout is what took me the longest to get used to. So my first tip is to customize it so that you're actually seeing the sections you want to see and are useful to you. So if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you should see a customize and reorder button. If you click on that, it'll open up all of the different sections that you can see in your Photos app layout. And so yours might look a little bit different than mine because I have already customized mine, but you can just go through and click any of the sections that would be useful to you. You can reorder them on the right just by holding and dragging them into the proper order. And if you mess up and just want to start all over again, you can hit the reset button in the top left. So I definitely recommend you take a few seconds to customize this to your liking because by default, everything is visible and I just found it incredibly overwhelming and I just kept getting lost. I couldn't find what I was looking for. So how I've personally set this up is of course, all the photos at the top, that's default, can't change that. But then I have my pin collections, I have my albums, my shared albums, some trips, media types, and utilities. And we'll talk about these sections a little bit more in a second. And part of this is the pinned collections. So I've put this right up at the top because this allows me to customize even more what I want to see kind of front and center. So if you put pin collections, then you'll see a modify button here where you can, again, go through and pick and choose what you want pinned at the top. And again, you have the option of rearranging them here on the side. So this is super helpful if you're always finding yourself going to the same album or looking for the same type of photo, you can narrow it down a little bit more and keep those most important things right at the top for you. I will quickly add that my biggest gripe that I still have with this new Photos app is the scrolling direction because if I want to see all of my photos, I just pull down from top to bottom to go through all my photos and get to the top. However, if I go into an album or any other subsection and I click in, then I have to scroll from bottom to top to get through it. And I have not been able to figure out a way to reverse the direction, but I just find that incredibly confusing and not intuitive. Like I wish the scrolling was the same regardless as what I was looking at. Maybe it's just me, but if that also bothers you or you've even found a way to fix this, please let me know in the comments down below. Tip number two is to start using the sorting and filtering options. So regardless of whether you're looking at an album or your entire library, once you go into it, you'll see at the bottom left, this new up and down arrow. This is gonna be your sorting and filtering options. So we'll get to that in a second. Quickly, I'll just show here at the bottom in your library view, you now also have a few different options. So you can see all, which is all your photos in the traditional grid format, but you can also click on months to see a breakdown or even years if you want to see the collections like this. And actually while I'm here, here are two more quick little tips that I find very, very useful. So you can hopefully see I have almost 23,000 photos. That is a heck of a lot of photos to have to scroll through. So you can always use your fingers to pinch in and out and adjust the zoom on your library, which I find very useful, but also if ever I wanted to get to the absolute top, to the very first photo, instead of scrolling, 
I can just click on the top left of my screen and it'll bring me right to the very, very top. And then if I wanna quickly get back down to the bottom, I can just hit all and it'll bring me right back. But back to our sorting and filtering options. So if you click on that button in the bottom left, at the top here, you will see two different sorting options. The bottom one, sort by date captured. That means your library and all your photos in this library will be organized by the date the picture was taken. Even if someone is sending you a photo, maybe by email or by messages, and you save it to your library, if that photo was taken three years ago, you're not gonna see it at the bottom of your feed. You're gonna see it up with the other photos from three years ago. So if ever you go looking for a photo that someone sent you and you think it's missing, take a look because you might just have your library sorted by date captured. Instead, because I absolutely hate that, I have it checked off as sort by recently added. That means regardless of when the photo was actually taken, if I add a photo to my library, it's gonna be at the bottom where I want it as the most recent photo I see. And the great thing is you only have to select this once and then your library will always be sorted that way. Then below that, you'll see the filter button. So if you click on filter, it opens up this menu and these are different options to break down or filter down your library even more. So the two that I use the most and find the most useful for me, the first is edited. So if I click on that, it'll only show me photos in my library that I have already edited. And the second is shared with you so that it will show me photos that people have sent me. You can also select multiple at once. So sometimes I wanna see things I've edited, but just the videos I've edited or just the photos I've edited. So you can go in here and really filter it down to what you wanna see. However, I will point out that the filter isn't saved. So anytime you leave your library and come back in, it resets. So I do hope that in a future update, we'll be able to create and save filter views because I think that would be incredible and something I would use all the time. And then at the bottom, you do also have a few view options. So you can click here to zoom in and out instead of the pinching trick I showed. You can also click to change the aspect ratio so you can actually see the aspect or the orientation of any photo you took. I personally though like to leave it on the square grid. And then at the bottom here, you can also choose to show screenshots and photos that have been shared with you. So if you are someone that takes a heck of a lot of screenshots and you find it kind of clutters your library, I would maybe come in here and recommend unchecking screenshots and this will save. So if you exit your library and come in, your screenshots would still be hidden from the library. I though personally, I leave these both as shown always, but just so you know, you do have that option as well. Tip number three is to start using the media types and utilities sections. And these are honestly probably my favorite new feature of the Photos app. So I have them right down at the bottom and I find them so incredibly useful. I use these all the time. Media types, pretty self-explanatory, but I will point out you can click on the header there and you can edit them. So unfortunately you can't hide or delete any of the sections, but you can reorder them, which I have to move like screen recordings further up so that I see them on the first window. I will say though that the utility section I find even more useful. And you can again click in here to edit and reorder them. A few I'll point out though that I find really cool. The first is receipts. So any photo you've taken with a receipt automatically goes into this section. Same thing with duplicates I find very useful. And then anything with handwriting and even QR codes. It'll just automatically organize them into these different categories. Tip four is to start using some of the smart grouping features. So first is the trips section. And I used to manually create an album for each one of my trips. And sometimes that would be thousands of photos. So that was super time consuming. This now groups them automatically. You don't have to turn anything on. Your phone will just intelligently group your trip photos together into an album. Super, super useful. And similarly, it'll create these groups for people and pets. So it'll automatically group together any photos 
of a specific person or a specific pet individually. But then at the top, it'll also try and create these smart groupings. So if you do have a lot of photos with your pet or your best friend, your family, it'll automatically create these groups. But if it is missing someone or you wanna create your own, you can also do it manually. So at the bottom, you can add people. And then at the top, you can also create your own group. So I do find these groups really awesome. It just makes it a lot easier to then go in and find those photos. Tip number five is to start using the search feature within the Photos app because it has gotten a lot smarter. So it's definitely better than having to scroll through all of your photos to find a needle in a haystack. So at the top right, you'll see the search button or that, you know, Apple's typical magnifying glass icon is the search. So it'll automatically recommend or suggest some searches, but then I can also get really specific. So maybe I wanna search for something like boat. It'll pull up all my photos with a boat and then it'll even suggest recommended searches to make it even more specific. Or maybe I wanna find all my sunset photos. You can do that or even any photo I've taken at a concert. Now I wouldn't necessarily say it's accurate 100% of the time, but it is very, very good and definitely way smarter than it used to be. Now for the bonus tip, if you are like me, you have probably tried and failed to place all of your photos or most of your photos into albums so that your camera roll or your photo library is much smaller and only your leftover photos that you have not placed in an album. However, if ever you've tried to do that, you've probably realized that when you move a photo from your library into an album, it does not remove it from the library. The photo is then in two places, in your library and in the album. And to make matters worse, once you've moved the photo into your album, if you then go back to your library and try to delete the photo from the library, it'll also delete it from the album you've just put it in. It is one of the most frustrating things about Apple Photos, always has been, and I don't know why there's no good way of doing this. There are, however, two workarounds for this. One is a temporary fix and one is a more permanent fix. However, I will say that neither is a perfect solution because Apple for whatever reason really does not want you to be able to do this. So the temporary way is with the filtering options we looked at before. If you go back to the bottom left and go to filter, you'll see an option at the bottom, not in an album. So if you click on that and turn on that filter, it will only show you the photos that are not already in an album. However, as I explained before, the filters are not permanent. So the second you leave your photo library and go back, it resets. The second workaround, which is more permanent and does actually achieve this with one small caveat, is to add the photo to a shared album instead of a regular album, even if you don't share the album with anyone. So I would find a photo, select shared album. You can name the album whatever you need to as usual. This time I'm not gonna actually share it with any participants. I'm gonna create the shared album. So we'll see the shared album is now down here with the one photo. If I go back up to my library and now delete this photo, it will still be there in the shared album. So it has actually done what we're trying to achieve. The one caveat though, because this is a shared album and it's intended to be shared with other people and shared quickly, it's sending the photo to the cloud. So the photo will end up being lesser quality than if you had left the photo in your camera roll or in your photo library. But if that doesn't matter to you and you don't care, then this is the perfect workaround. If you did get value out of today's video, please let me know by leaving a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me and it really does make a difference for the YouTube algorithm. So that's it. Have a great day. Bye.